that I've memorized from drawing it hundreds of times. And you have shadow area falling into here and uh, there and there. And some people's earlobes are attached, probably like, what, I don't know, 10 to 20% of the population. And if you're going to draw a lot of portraits, then people don't look too carefully at the ears when they're looking at the portrait to, and studying it. But you still want to make it look complete because it looks weird if it's not complete, right? And that shape, when viewed from the front, looks more like this, right? So this kind of branch area, for lack of a better term, in the middle might stick out more on some people, like I've drawn it here. Okay, so I thought it was important to do a separate drawing of the eye and the ear so that we could explain the steps uh, more thoroughly because on a full portrait, some of those details get lost. Okay. Uh, let's see here. The nose, uh, basically, I didn't do a separate drawing, but it doesn't have any lines on the side. It The, the shape of it for the, the top two-thirds are just created by shading. Uh, so, like, you can see on this drawing that it's got an edge to it because the face is turned. But when it's face on, you don't really see lines on the side. So you have to create the volume of it by shading. And then you have like these three spheres at the bottom uh, with the nostrils. And noses look pretty different from one person to the other. So sometimes this nostril line is connected to the side and sometimes it's not. And then last but not least, I made this drawing and it's not photo accurate, but that was not really my goal with the, with this exercise. It's that would be a very high bar to hit for uh, beginner students. And what I really wanted to do was just have this face, uh, um, the actress Lupita Nyong'o to, to just kind of inform a drawing. And, and I was kind of asking myself and the students, can we make this look like somebody who might really exist? Whether or not it looks like this person is not a really big deal. Because I didn't think it was really in our best interest for people to watch me fuss over it and erase it over and over until it looked exactly the same as this. Which I could do, but that's not really our, it's not a worthwhile goal for, for a first introduction to doing a, the portrait. Okay, but uh, her head is tilted to the side a little bit, and I feel that it's just imperceptibly tilted up a little bit, like this, just a little bit. And that's kind of what I wanted to capture. It's it's tilted to the right, and, and her chin might be jutting out just a tiny, tiny bit. So I did my upside down egg, uh, but you can see her, her chin is, isn't very pointy compared to this guy, right? So that, I, I, I captured that. I think I actually made her jaw a little bit broader. That's fine. I feel like I managed to capture some of the essence of what makes an African face. Uh, and that just kind of came intuitively, uh, maybe because of the broader nose or fuller lips. And I just established the same proportions I talked about in the previous drawing of just getting the eye line, uh, put a, like a curve across here because it's tilted. I wouldn't put it straight down the middle. I just, the, the, the center line, I curve it slightly and then establish where the nose is and the mouth. And, and I work out from there. And because I leave the contours of that original egg shape very, very light, that when I work out from there, pretty much always have to redraw where the jaw line fits as I build out my proportions. But it's still necessary for me to put that initial egg shape so that I place the features in the right spot, that it's all centered. And then I reassess 
where that jawline, where the cheekbones and the, the edge of the skull are uh, as I build out from there and get, kind of go landmark to landmark to landmark. And you can always take your pencil and check your measurements. So you've got, say, the, the comparing the eye widths across. You know, you don't have a full eye width on this side, but you have full, perfect eye width in the center. And then if you take pupil to pupil and compare that distance, it goes, oh, pupil to pupil, that distance is the same as pupil to mouth. So do I have that proportion correct here? Yes, I do. Okay, uh, last thing I did is I established a light source coming from the right, which is not exactly the same as here because it looks like her face is mostly lit by the photographer's flash. Uh, but I put it from the right hand side because I like shading in the jawline like this and like so. Okay, uh, it's been fun. I hope to see you in the next class. Thank you so much for drawing with me. Keep practicing. Don't be hard on yourself because it's a complex skill that takes uh, time and investment. And uh, yeah, just have fun and don't be too hard on yourself because you have to do this quite a lot of times to uh, get good at it. Have a good day.